Hi, I'm Eric Lanesque. I'm here in the TMC newsroom, and we are in San Jose, California this week. And on the program right now, I'm happy to be speaking with uh, David Rokita. He's the VP of Technology Operations at Hexagrid. Dave, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Eric. So, uh, cloud, it's, it's obviously something that people have been talking about, a lot of people talking about, people adopting. Um, what are some of the things in terms of the technology that have created that, driven that uh, emphasis on cloud and that interest in cloud? Well, I mean, they're looking to, to cloud to solve traditional IT problems. Um, you know, one of the things everybody's looking for is uh, cost efficiency, scalability. Uh, they want a little more agility in their, uh, in their technology operations. And what they're finding um, as they go out and they try to automate their infrastructure is that, uh, you know, it's not really been a technology problem. It's actually been more of a cost problem. I mean, the technology has been around for a long time. We've known how to create uh, interconnected networks. We know how to create horizontal scalability, all of these things. But, uh, you know, where things really start to break down is the actual cost. And so the way Hexagrid looks at it is, is that, uh, you know, as we move aggressively into the cloud, we need to look at cost scalability as well as actual technical scalability. And uh, so that's where a lot of the solutions actually break down. And so what we try to do is, uh, you know, put the uh, customers, the people that are trying to build cloud in a situation where they can succeed both financially as well as, uh, you know, with the technology. So I think cost savings and efficiency, like you say, are two of the things that, that uh, people often mention when they talk about why people are going to the cloud. Um, what are kind of the elements that enable those cost efficiencies? Well, people look to the cloud to, you know, kind of migrate from that upfront capital model and move a little bit more to an, an operational expense model to where they can scale that business, you know, as their business grows. They can add it on demand. And, uh, you know, unfortunately what they find is, is that uh, cloud computing and a lot of models that are available today still requires that significant capital outlay to even get started. So everybody wants to know, you know, is it two years, is it three years, is it five years that I'm actually going to get my ROI back on that system? So, you know, <clears throat> to get the cost efficiencies, you have to build with a model that scales financially as well as technologically. Are there, what kind of technical uh, challenges are there when migrating to a private cloud scenario? Uh, technological, well, security. Is, uh, is a big concern, and uh, part of it is, is that we're used to knowing where our data is. We're used to having full control of it. So to gain some of these uh, operational efficiencies, we have to give up some of that trust. So you know, we see a lot of uh, resistance to cloud computing when it comes to uh, security. We also see you know, scalability in the networks. Um, networks really haven't kept up with the demand of cloud computing. So if we take... Uh, a cloud computing model and we put it inside a traditional data center, we'll find that actually we'll bottleneck at the network or the storage layer you know, pretty quickly. So we have to rethink the way we do some of these things to get that, that true cost efficiency and scalability in place. So as we need to increase uh, scalability, grow networks, uh, are the current network speeds and, and uh, uh, data rates going to help uh, increase that? Well, I think we're on the cusp of a significant increase in the actual speeds, but it's not so much the speed necessarily. I mean, that certainly plays into it, no doubt about it. But uh, what we actually notice is, you know, the physical scalability of switches and bottlenecking as we bridge switches across the networks and the way we've done the traditional tree models of our network in our data centers, that's where we start to bottleneck because now these workloads are completely fluid in our environment. They move around, they can uh, be on one server one day, another server the next day, and so we lose some of that uh, ability to pre-plan how that network topology lays out. Is it a question of uh, playing a little bit of catch up and then having the market move ahead a little bit so you're never going to quite get there? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. But, um, you know, I think that we're, we're on the edge of good things. Uh, you know, we're talking about uh, 100, meg, uh, 100 gigabit uh, 40 gigabit networks were on the horizon of that, and I think that that's going to help uh, specifically, you know, as we're putting our data into the cloud, how do we get to it? Just getting to that data across the internet is, is problem number one, and then once you do that, scalability in the actual local network like we have already talked. And at some point, though, we've got to realize that uh, 
there are going to be some uh, delays in getting to that data possibly. Uh, nothing, isn't it just a part of technology we have to accept that uh, there are going to be some obstacles? Well, I think to a certain degree we have to accept it, but um, you know, it's kind of the role of Hexagrid and other cloud computing companies to uh, innovate in that space, uh, you know, deal with those problems and still create a solution that uh, you know, provides the same value as our old solutions, but all the benefits of cloud. So one of the things that, uh, that I know that you've recently done is, is kind of moved, uh, trying to move into the international front as well. Globally, uh, are there the same technology challenges uh, across the world as you're seeing here in North America? Um, it's actually quite interesting. Internationally, what you see, you know, actually the United States, a lot of the infrastructure is antiquated. It uh, was built around the time of the internet and uh, you know, now it needs to be refreshed. So a lot of these emerging markets are green field opportunities to where they're buying new network gear, they're buying new pipes, new optical networks and all of this stuff. So, I mean, they're actually in a prime position and that's why you see quick adoption because they're in a prime position to actually take advantage of cloud computing very aggressively. Excellent, uh, glad, glad to hear that. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for being on the program today. Thanks, Eric.